Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update this morning. I hope you're doing great. And we're going to be talking about a major hurricane which has made landfall uh, just a few hours ago in portions of Mexico. This is Hurricane Otis, which was a complete surprise last evening. So I will be talking about that and we'll also be focusing on what could happen over in the Atlantic Basin, specifically for the vicinity of the Caribbean. We'll also be looking at what is currently happening there and the rainfall forecast for the day. And also, Hurricane Tammy is intensifying out there, so we'll briefly talk about that as well. So let's get straight into it. And uh, we're going to be kickstarting things with the Eastern Pacific. So we're looking at the satellite imagery, the infrared satellite, and that right there is Hurricane Otis, currently a Cat 4 weakening system. It's weakening very rapidly but it made landfall as a catastrophic cat 5 hurricane now this hurricane has the second most rapid intensification ever in the eastern pacific and the hurricane which is ahead of it which is number one on the list is hurricane patricia of 2015 so patricia had peak winds of 250 15 miles per hour that's absolutely insane and all this intensified into a cat 5 hurricane with peak winds of 165 miles per hour now despite patricia attaining category 5 status very quickly uh, back in 2015 it didn't make landfall as such a very strong system but on the other hand Otis has made landfall as a Cat 5 hurricane, so it is the strongest landfall and hurricane ever on record in the eastern Pacific near Acapulco, Mexico. And as such, uh, dangerous conditions are being unleashed, and some of the first images and videos are coming in of how devastating the damage is right now across uh, Mexico, parts of southwest Mexico. And only 24 hours, because the day prior, Otis was expected to make landfall just below hurricane status and it had intensified into a cat 5 from being a tropical storm with winds of 50 miles per hour that is some crazy intensification just onto landfall and even if it was offshore a bit longer it would have strengthened even more uh, as a cat 5 hurricane so very deadly conditions extremely dangerous conditions across uh, southwest mexico this morning there could still be these periods of very heavy rainfall, uh, dangerous mudslides as well. So across the states of Guerrero and also uh, western Oaxaca, there could be a lot of heavy rainfall with maximum totals of 20 inches of rain through to tomorrow on Thursday. So this is an extremely dangerous situation here. But again, Otis is rapidly weakening. It is a Cat 4 uh, as of the latest update. Let's take a look at that. So we can see the hurricane warning is still in effect. So it is uh, still a Cat 4 with maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. Might even be uh, weaker than a Cat 4 right now. And is moving to the north northwest at 10 miles per hour so it should become post tropical by uh tonight going into tomorrow nonetheless there's still going to be that rainfall threat so uh my priors my thoughts are with the people of mexico right now going through this dangerous situation here an extremely dangerous a situation that was not at all anticipated because even last uh, yesterday in the morning the system was not expected to intensify so quickly into the monster that it became breaking records here as the strongest landfall and hurricane ever in the eastern pacific but of course guys i'll be keeping you posted on the system now we want to hop over into the atlantic basin and also intensify but not at that rate is hurricane tammy so tammy is well to the southeast East of Bermuda right now there you can see it and uh, it has strengthened into a category 2 hurricane fortunately not a problem for anyone at the moment uh, going to the Caribbean we can see that there is some activity across some areas we'll be talking more about that in a sec but let's go on to Tammy here so looking at the latest cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center we can see that it is sustaining winds up to 100 miles per hour it could strengthen even more maybe with peak winds of 105 miles per hour or so and it is moving up to the northeast 
gusts at 10 miles per hour. Now, even though it has strengthened, it is losing its tropical cyclone characteristics, and as such, it is forecast to become post-tropical tomorrow and be a pretty strong post-tropical cyclone out there. And usually when these storms are undergoing uh, that phenomenon of becoming post-tropical, losing their tropical cyclone characteristics, that wind feel broadens. And so uh, there will eventually be weakening of it as conditions get more and more unfavorable, but it is likely to still be very close in proximity to Bermuda. So even with tropical storm force winds, uh, that could be felt across Bermuda. There could be a bit of surge, even some periods of heavy rainfall from Tammy as we head into the end of this week going into early next week. And uh, what happens afterwards really is unknown. Notice how the National Hurricane Center's cone is just a circle at that point because really it can go anywhere. Some models still want to take it to off to the west. Some want to show it just slowly turn around, eventually curving back out to the northeast. We'll definitely have to wait and see, but I'm here to keep you posted every step of the way with the system. Now we want to drift into the Caribbean, so let's go. And there you can see that there is some activity across some areas, some convection, especially in the Northwest Caribbean. And we can see over in the Eastern Pacific offshore of the Pacific coast of Central America. And uh, all that activity is in association with what was Tropical Depression 21. So that is likely to form into something over in the Pacific. Matter of fact, on the National Hurricane Center's outlook, we're seeing a 60% chance of formation through the next seven days. So We'll see what becomes of that system over there and if it will be a problem for anyone. We'll keep watching that for sure, but going back to the satellite imagery of the Caribbean again, a lot going on in the northwestern part of the basin for portions of the Yucatan, even the Bay Islands of Honduras, and uh, north of Honduras itself, there is some activity. And down in the southwest Caribbean as well, and offshore of Colombia, going to Venezuela, the ABC Islands. I hope you guys are enjoying the weather there. Likely uh, all this thunderstorm activity and even some rainfall as well. As we head to the Lesser Antilles this morning. Pretty quiet, maybe with some passing showers or thunderstorms for some areas, but there's nothing too crazy. However, that could change as we go through the day. Uh, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, again, nothing crazy happening. Uh, going to Hispaniola for the northern part of the island, there is some thunderstorm activity there, maybe with some periods of very heavy rainfall. Jamaica. So there has been some well-needed shower activity across the island. Uh, even this morning for some of us, even for my area, I'm definitely enjoying this kind of weather here. And uh, that is welcome because it has been so hot and dry. We know how hot it has been. Cayman Islands, Cuba, going up to the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, not a whole lot happening this morning. Let's look at the rainfall forecast from euro and as the map becomes more colorful more rainfall activity is expected so as we head through uh today going into the very very early morning hours of tomorrow we can see here that this map gets pretty colorful across portions of central america sections of mexico belize guatemala el salvador the bay islands of honduras and let's not forget ambergris key uh also for nicaragua costa rica panama down through colombia venezuela northern guyana even the abc islands as well so there could be some periods of heavy rainfall across areas within these spots and then as we head to our trinidad tobago barbados and then from grenada all the way up through to guadeloupe there could be some periods of heavy rain for the rest of the leeward islands not that high of a chance but uh, that doesn't mean there won't be any activity at all through today maybe a pop-up shower at the most and then as we head to the virgin islands for the british virgin islands things are going to be a bit on the quieter side it's likely to be a pretty hot day with some showers possible but that chance gets a little bit greater for the u.s virgin islands and Puerto Rico itself. Heading over into Hispaniola, as we saw, there's already some activity taking place across some areas, some North Shore for Jamaica, but there could be some additional showers as we head through today. Much not expected for the Cayman Islands, most of Cuba, sections of the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Now let's go ahead and quickly look at the ensemble maps from both Euro and GFS the latest update. So starting with Euro. So this goes out to Tuesday of next week, the 31st of October, the final day of the month. There we can see all those members picking up on that Caribbean system, potentially something uh, moving up from the south. And as I was mentioning yesterday, areas such as Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, definitely want to keep watch. Uh, and also for Central America, because if an area flow pressure is forming nearby, there's 
likely going to be a lot of heavy rainfall across some areas. So we'll definitely have to keep watching for uh, development next week. While this have not been the most consistent in terms of where this could form and how much it could develop the intensity, but they have been consistent in hinting that we will likely see something as we head to the latter part of this month and into next month. So really for next week, we're watching out for development in the Caribbean. There are the tracks for Tammy. We can see that the members, uh, some of them want to take it off to the west, some of them want to take it out to east. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. As I said, similar story as we head on to GFS, uh, the GFS ensemble map here, and we're seeing that cluster of members picking up on that potential Caribbean system. So again, guys, the trend is there. It is likely that we'll see something try to form. But as of right now, in terms of where exactly it goes and the potential intensity, that is unknown. And the intensity will all depend on how conducive conditions are. And the biggest inhibiting factor would be land interaction uh, and also the wind shear. But more, more so, the wind shear could be a problem for whatever tries to form if it is unfavorable. But if we're talking about a conducive environment, that spells trouble. And GFS can be a bit bullish at times with how strong these systems get. But in reality, if we're talking about the most ideal conditions, it is not an impossible scenario to see something very strong brew in the Caribbean. For example, back in 2020, there were major hurricanes, Eta and Iota, which uh, affected Central America as strong category four hurricanes. And by the way, uh, many persons would look at it to say the season is finishing. Oh, there'll be no more storms. But what about the conditions? In the Caribbean, there are anomalously warm waters. That is essentially what basically canceled out of effects of El Nino this season in terms of impacting how many storms we could see. So we have seen uh, a lot of storms. I mean, there are literally only two names left on the list of names for the season. So we could definitely see something form even rapidly intensify because for one, those, ex uh, those very warm waters of the Caribbean and even those deep warm waters have not been tapped into by anything this hurricane season. So they're just sitting around and what we're seeing now in terms of the very warm waters could be what is typical seen around the peak season so if anything should really try to form and other conditions are conducive mostly that shear those upper level winds then it spells trouble in the Caribbean hopefully that's not going to be the case but we definitely have to keep our eyes on the tropics it's not over just yet I'm here to keep you posted though so that is pretty much it for this update and I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so and remember to always be weather wise